Very pleased to be joined on the line right now by the head coach and GM of the Merritt Centennials, Luke Pierce, is on the line with us. Luke, as always, thanks for taking the time to chat here today. Yeah, my pleasure as always, Brian. So, uh, weekly recap, uh, we look back to uh, a loss against Nanaimo last week and also uh, a loss against Cowich and Valley, and then uh, you guys finally got uh, the monkey off your back against the uh, Alberni Valley Bulldogs with a 4-3 win. Although, what I noticed over the week, though, is that you really started to, to play a lot better and probably could have won all three of those games easily. Yeah, well, I thought that uh, you know it was definitely a better week than the, the one prior to that, and you know, even finishing off with uh, Prince George there the week before, I thought that was a game we could have won, and an Nanaimo a game we could have won, and and same thing on Saturday with uh, Couch. And but at the end of the day, uh, it took until Sunday for us to get it done. And I think on Sunday we saw you know some some scoring from from different guys on our roster. Some guys stepped up and and helped you know provide some of that offense and that was something that was lacking we were kind of relying on one line to get things done for us and and failed to you know add any secondary there so it's a big key for us and we're gonna have to keep that going really noticed that actually now that you mention it was that uh in the game against Stephen Cowichan uh it wasn't the Jones Sakila stack line that was getting it done in fact it was Mac Tack with Boken for and Max Vallis yeah, that was a nice, uh, you know, getting Sean back in, and and you know we had a good chat with Max and, and talked about his abilities to what we think be a game difference player, and uh, you know he's not so much just struggled as of late, but he just hasn't been a real impact player for us, and we need him to do that. We need him to you know provide some. Uh, significant secondary offense and um, he took that on on Saturday and then showed exactly what he can do now the key for him and, and for the other guys there is to do that on a consistent basis and um, Sunday I thought he you know had another decent game but I still think he can be a lot better and um, that's going to be you know a major uh, key for us going into the playoffs is having guys who can you know also impact games because uh, we're going to face some significant uh, you know defense with, with the Jones line and uh, expect them to get shut down a little bit and you're going to need other guys to step up and, and fill the void. Well, and you mentioned last week when we were chatting at this time about how the, you were trying to change up some of your systems play to get the defense a little more engaged in the in the offensive side of things. Uh, were you still doing that? Because we ended up seeing a goal from Reese Wilcox. Steve Tracera had a pair. Is that something that you're still hoping to do? Yeah, absolutely. I thought, uh, you know, Reese's goal obviously was, uh, was a beauty and but prior to that, against uh, Nanaimo, we had about three great opportunities from you know cycles in the zone where we engaged our D on the back door and and had you know great passes across and unfortunately some really nice saves by the goaltenders. But uh, I thought it was starting to come and and we finally saw it uh, come to fruition here on the weekend with with Reese's big goal and then with Steve Tresser getting to himself on uh, on Sunday here. Well, and talk maybe in that win about how Steve played. I mean, he seemed like a man on a mission. Like nothing was going to stop him. In in that game yeah he's uh it's amazing that he's got the abilities to do that uh, it's not the first time this year that we've seen him essentially throw everybody on his back and and you know go get the game for himself and for the team and i thought it started again on on saturday when he uh stepped up for for jp and and had a pretty spirited bout there and he took a couple of good licks in it but uh, when he got back into the game he was you know still one of our best players there and um his focus after the game and his discussion with the team and you know what we needed to do better and and uh, getting guys on board was tremendous and you can only really be that effective of a leader if you're able to go out there and and back up your words on you know your next outing and he did that on Sunday he was uh, absolutely tremendous at both ends of the rink and you know really spearheaded our offense and and also was key to our defensive game you know I'm not sure if a lot of fans realize this, realize this and you can correct me if I'm wrong but with Jacob Reichert returning to the lineup on Saturday it really seemed like it balanced out your forward unit a lot more uh, in the fact that you had uh, you know all four lines rolling and they each seemed dangerous every time they were out there yeah I think Jake what he does is just like you said it balances out our attack a little better it gives us uh, you know at least you know, one or two guys on each line who we feel are, you know, offensively gifted and, and capable of making big plays. And, um, 
you know, no slight to the guys who have been getting it done here while Jake's been absent, but they've had to, you know, play a little bit above their roles and and, uh, and chip in. And, and for the most part, they did that prior to this little slump here. So, you know, Jake still is a ways to go before we feel like he's back in top form. I, I thought he had a, a decent game Saturday, and and uh, Sunday I think the effects of playing back to back started to show a little bit. And it'll uh, it'll take him another week or two before his conditioning, uh, you know, skating conditioning is back up to speed, but. Uh, it's definitely a bright spot right now. And definitely notice that in terms of Jacob Reichert, like, I mean, he, he was throwing his body around. You could tell that even though you've been off for some 10 weeks, the skill was still there. Well, he's got tremendous uh, skill set with his hands for a big guy. Is, uh, are incredible, and he's able to make plays at high speeds. And um, The nice thing for us was that uh, the physical part of his game was there from his first shift, and that's the biggest thing when you've been off for such a time frame. Um, you know, getting your speed and your timing back to where you're able to to not just be in a spot to make hits, but to actually get the hit uh, is difficult. And he was able to do that. He used his size effectively. And um, like I said, when he gets back up into to top form, uh, I think he'll you know be a major impact player for us in the playoffs. It's another busy week for you guys. You've got three games coming up starting uh, tomorrow night against the Westside Warriors. You're in Vernon on Friday and against Langley on Saturday. Uh, what's uh, the mindset? What are you working on this week heading into those games? Well, we talked about after the game Sunday, you know, it was obviously nice to get the back in the win column, and, and now the key for us is trying to build some momentum heading into the stretch, and or sorry, down the last few games into the playoffs. And, um, you know, the, the thing that, that I truly believe is that uh, you can't flick a light switch on and, and turn into a playoff type of team. You have to build yourself up for it. And, you know, the last couple of weeks obviously weren't the best for us, but now we've got uh, exactly two weeks to get ourselves into form, and um, it's all about the process for us. So, Again, not getting caught up in wins and losses and, and things like that. We've got to make sure that we're getting our game ready for uh, what's going to be an intense first round. Well, and is that something that uh, has sort of crept up here, or do you guys sort of look at it that way? Is that, hey, there's only six games left in the season. This is your final road swing against teams that aren't going to be your first round playoff opponent because once you play that team, that's going to be it until you make it to the second round. So, I mean, is is that something that's on the horizon for you guys as coaches, or do the players think about that? I mean, what sort of the thought process with the final two weeks of the season here? Yeah, it's obviously. I think it's in everybody's mind that it's it's coming to an end, and and you know it's it is. It's a really difficult time of year. I mean, they talk about the you know the winter blues and things like that, and uh, this is a time where everybody's just anxious to get the playoffs started. And you know, we we still have six games left to play, and for us as coaches, that's our biggest uh, challenge is to keep them focused on the days ahead of us here and not get looking too far ahead. And it's a lot similar as going into our Christmas break when you have a week left. Uh, you know, you know everybody's thinking about the break, but you still got a job to do. So we've got to make sure that uh, you know each game that we prepare for here in the next two weeks that we're we're talking about you know certain parts of our game that we want to see improved or that we want to work on, and and we have to make sure that we're learning from that. And the the two weeks is going to go by quickly, and then soon enough playoffs will be here. But uh, we still do have some work to do before that. How about the Westside Warriors? It's a team that you guys are five and zero against uh, at this point of the season. This is your final matchup against them in the regular season do you think that too much stock's been put into that record yeah i do i i, I really like their team i think uh, actually I talked to darren this morning and you know he was asking me what uh you know who would be our preferred playoff matchup and you know i didn't really have an answer for him and he kind of laughed and joked said oh you'd probably love to see us and i said no i don't think we would and i i do think they have a really good team um for some reason we've been able to you know have success against them we've gotten their heads a little bit but um I think we would have a good chance against them in the playoffs, but at the same time, we're going to have to make sure that we're at our best because uh, that's a good hockey team that's played very well as of late, and um, Wednesday will be a great test for us. Okay, I'll cut it off.